Bona Tavardia Dolly Old Eek. Bona Tavardia Dolly Old Eek. Bona Tavardia Dolly Old Eek, which means um, how nice to see you again. The Polari, I only picked up that from um, a programme when I was on BBC at one o'clock with Kenneth Horne and, and um, another friend who's um, not with us now. Well, Miss Drawn, how nice to valdi your dolly old eek again. <laughs> what brings you trolling in here? Oh, can you help me? I've erred. Yeah, we've all erred, Ducky. Yeah. It's common knowledge, isn't it, Joe? Oh, mm. well, will you take my case? Well, it depends on what it is. Mm. We've got a criminal practice that takes up most of our time. Mm. Yes, but apart from that... I can remember sitting over Sunday lunch with my mum and dad. I was an only child. And... They were absolutely blank about it. It was like it wasn't on at all. It was all the radio was always on in the background, but they just never acknowledged it at all. And I wanted to acknowledge it, but felt I couldn't because they didn't. Clory was something in between uh, slang and a full form of language. Um, it was used mainly by gay men, but also um, female impersonators, prostitutes, um, and other. Um, sort of groups who were somehow stigmatised or, or kind of on the edges of society. So the kind of polaroid that they were using was quite authentic. Williams especially, I think, used it in a way which kind of went beyond what the scriptwriters were aware of. So Williams would sometimes insert maybe an extra level of joke and making the sketches a little bit ruder um, than they were originally intended. Well, do the best you can. Here's the dishcloth. We can wash up in here. All the dishes are dirty. Speak for yourself. <laughs> The idea here is the word dish, the word play on dish, um, as we would understand it as an attractive man. Um, but dish has a secondary meaning in Polari um, to refer to your bum. So there's kind of this extra level of, of kind of rude meaning. I'm Kyle Ryder and co-director of a short film in Polari. The film's called Putting on the Dish. Basically, it, it means applying lube in preparation for anal sex. I was seeing this HP from Sheffield once. Plates the size of bowling pins, thought it was in for a right bone of Chalvary. Nada Tavada in the larder. Oh, bijou. You needn't put the brandy on for that, I said when I saw it. Polari, for us, was a kind of treasure box. You know, when we were looking at that dictionary, it was as if we'd been kind of ushered into a room with hieroglyphics on the wall and handed the Rosetta Stone and the raw material and, and, and the kind of the key to it all, and as if someone had said, look, go in, decipher it, have fun, see what you can make of it. Sad to think of her in the queer cam, really. What do you mean? She had a running with a Lily Law. Oh dear. Sharpie flashed his cart so in the carsy. I hope she kept her ogles front. Well, she got amblyopia, isn't she? She could practically only bar her sideways. What did the beak say? It was very harsh. Asked if she was sorry. And was she? Only that it wasn't worth the look she got. <laughs> <laughs> Polari has a really, really complicated history. It goes all the way back to Elizabethan times, beginning with something called Molly slang, which was used by men who had sex with other men, and they would call themselves Mollies, and they had certain slang words, words like to cruise and things like that, and they gave each other female names. Um, then we gradually move forward to the 19th century, and we have something called Parliari, which was spoken by um, beggars, buskers, people who worked in fairgrounds, people who worked in marketplaces, things like that. Um, and it was used mainly in the first half of the 20th century, sometimes in the 19th century as well, um, by people who really wanted to kind of hide their identity and find ways of communicating with each other. When well, they used to have a word called trolling, and that's where basically when Jimmy and I were using the trollettes, you know, trolling around the stage and things like that, I remember in the Oxford Gay Action Group there was a man called Alex, and Alex used to use it, and he'd always say, oh, Banner to Vardy, oh, Varda the Lally's on that one, and things like that. There are so many rich expressions, and they say so much. Um, I mean, there's one scene uh, that didn't make the film, it's when one of the characters sort of says, uh, do, you, do you think she's in the life? To be in the life is, is to be gay, but what a, you know, what a wonderful way to say that. I have used Polari occasionally for review sketches which did involve sort of camp gay characters as well. I remember the first one I think I did was one called Dragula, Queen of Darkness, uh, which was, that's 1917. It was almost like a prototype of the Rocky Horror Show, actually, uh, now I think of it.
one of the people that I interviewed told me that he'd been in, arranged to meet a friend in a gay bar. The friend was over an hour late, and when the friend eventually arrived, look, looking very flustered and upset, kind of came in and sort of sat down and said, um, oh, your mother's been arrested, ducky. And it turned out that he'd been cottaging in a local loos. He was referring to himself in the third person um, as your mother and also using a feminising term as well, which is something that was very common among plural speakers. And I think that kind of enables you to kind of make light of, of kind of the bad situation that's happening. You kind of make it sound silly and trivial. I can make a big fuss maybe about something like, say, breaking a fingernail or having your wig on askew or something like that, but then something really tragic and bad, like being beaten up. It's a kind of way of inverting society's values, and I think Polari speakers were very good at that. Being gay was not fun in the 1950s at all. It was very different to, to current times. Let us pause for a moment and remember George Brinham, one-time chair of the Labour Party National Executive, who in 1962 picked up a young cellar man and then invited him back to his flat. He said to Summers, give us a kiss and tried to put his arms around the lad, who hit him with a decanter four times and smashed his skull in. Do you know, funny we talked earlier, I'm not putting on, which everyone will think, putting on the wig or the hair, but another um, from years ago, it was called The Rye, and I, I did use that a lot, I couldn't understand why. Stunning. I think I'll walk down the seafront, see if I can make some money, or, or something to that effect. I think when you first encounter Polari, what really jumps out at you is is all the funny stuff, the the you know the, the camp stuff, the silly stuff, the inventive stuff, the stuff about you know like you know dicks and asses and and all the sexual stuff. Speaking of baskets, oh, Gloria, that stretchy corribungus. What you mean? But when you look at it a bit closely, you realise there's, there's racism. I mean, there's terms for, you know, black people. It's like schwarze omi and, and I think for Jewish, kosher omi. Um, and and, and then they're, they're terms, I mean, they're there, and I think they are often used in, in sort of a, a derogatory way. People who spoke it from a very different generation um, and had, you know, different values. And um, I think, you know, to call them racist is, is, is maybe an oversimplification of the word. I think, I think society was kind of more, more endemically racist then and there was less awareness of say, you know, referring to someone just by their skin colour, you know, that, than, than we would do now. So that there's, you know, there is a kind of a nastiness in the way Polari is used, and there's, and there's a cattiness, um, or, or there can be. Oh, go on. Put your fakements in your little shush bag off your scarper. I mean, that's potentially also one of the reasons why, uh, you know, why, why it kind of died out when it did, because, you know, in 1967, homosexuality was decriminalised, but that was also a time of so many other social advancements. The television done the, done the breakthrough, because, um, I mean, they were never allowed to be out unless there was some... They would say, oh, you know, he's not married, I can't... He's not married, you know, and that used to be the thing to say. I mean, I remember um, when Larry Grayson um, announced that he was engaged to Noel Gordon from Crossroads, and we all fell about laughing because we knew that she was a lesbian and that, uh, obviously, he was gay. Um, so, so they weren't helping themselves at all, and they weren't helping the cause either of Polari or feminine gay men. The younger gay men were kind of coming up in the early 70s. Um, they have these different kind of values. They don't want to be associated with, with sort of secrecy and, and sort of hiding, but instead there are these concepts like gay pride, gay liberation, coming out. Um, and Polari is kind of seen as the detriment of those things. The thing about Polari was that it was a kind of defiantly feminine gay men. That's what it was about. And for me, that was not the kind of gay man that I was or the kind of gay man that I wanted to be. The Polari, I, 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 never, I never picked it up. I never, you know, 
I, I thought well, you can't speak out straightforward instead of using silly um, things to explain something. Um, I said, well, how on earth am I talking about that? People don't have, have, have a clue what they're talking about. That's such a long way to go. You know, you'd be better probably talking in Braille. The Church of England Theological College has expressed regret after trainee priests held a service in Polari. Instead of the traditional glory be to the Father and to the Son and the Holy Spirit, the prayer offered was faithness be to the auntie and to the homie chavi and to the fantabulosa fairy. It's interesting because language itself is the threat. And what's encoded in that, in that language or those words. And so if there's, an, if there's a discomfort with the words and the way things are being expressed, perhaps there's a more deep-seated discomfort, a true discomfort with what it means to be gay. I looked online, looked on Twitter and, and Facebook to see what people were saying about um, you know, the Polari Evening Song and the apology afterwards. Some people were upset genuinely by it, and some gay Christians thought it wasn't a very good way of gendering inclusivity. Some gay people thought it was a you know, fuss over nothing, and some people were just very cross about it. There's not much sense in speaking a made-up language because they won't understand what you're talking about. So I probably would be a little bit, um, you know, what are they doing that for? You look at what's encoded in Polari. I mean, the, the, the mere fact that God is Gloria we turn the, the Heavenly Father into some fabulous, you know, fabulous woman called Gloria who might as well be a hairdresser. I think I'd say to anyone who wants to hold a service in Polari, go ahead and hold it in Polari, but then I'd sort of say maybe, maybe your career is not really in the clergy. Maybe you should be in theatre, or maybe you should be directing a film, or maybe you should be writing your own script. Um, you know, if the church is going to have a problem with it, then uh, you know, it, then 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 find find another uh, find another audience. One more. Stop it. Oh, get back and smile. Come on, everybody. Um, without people who spoke Polari and the people who were around at the time and their perseverance and the fact that they just put up with, with so much abuse, we wouldn't have the current situation in the UK, and I think that's incredibly important. Why are you the Lucifer? Lucifer to light. There's not an, an increase of Polari coming back again. I'll have to investigate this, because there might be something to put into Miss Trollett's um, act about it. Smile, boys. I think for a younger generation to find Polari is, is, is wonderful because, A, it's fun. It's a lot of fun. It's a part of our history, and it's a good way into the whole idea of gay history. What's the use of worrying? It never was worthwhile. So, back the troubles in your own. Get back and smile, smile, smile. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Give yourself a wonderful round of applause.